Greetings, everyone. Well, today, we've got a Blu-ray update for you. Um, basically, a Blu-ray set and a Blu-ray single. Both uh, some recent additions to the superhero stuff uh, collection. <laughs> In this case, we'll be focusing on DC Comics superheroes. Uh, one of these items is something that I used to have in my collection, but uh, actually ended up selling it during the Great Purge of 2010, as it's come to be known. And the other was something that, you know, I saw cheap at a pawn shop and just couldn't pass up, and it was something I was looking for anyway. So let's head on over to the Blu-ray shelf and uh, see what we're going to be talking about today. Alrighty, so we of course want to go over to the Blu-ray shelves, which are these ones here. And we want to go down to the, uh, yeah, this shelf here. This is all, actually this entire shelf, uh, without exception, is all stuff based on comic books. This one. And this one. So the reacquisition is, of course, the Batman movie anthology, 1989 to 1997. And the new acquisition would be this one, Superman Doomsday. One of the, actually, I think this was the first of the DC Universe animated original movies. Um, yeah, and that's what we're going to talk about today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Yeah, well, some of you may be kind of scratching your head, thinking, well, why'd you get that one? Didn't you already have it? And the simple answer is, yes, I did already have it, and it was one of the things that I sold during the Great Purge of 2010. So, this is a reacquisition. But I don't think I actually did a full in-depth video about it. I think I just kind of did a brief update saying, look what I got, and that was it. But, uh, of course, now I do a little more, little more depth to my updates. Uh, I should also mention a generous viewer a while back sent me this, which is, of course, the beautiful digibook of the first movie. It actually includes uh, some pages from the comic book adaptation. I do, of course, have the full comic book adaptation. Um, it also includes, let me just find it here, it's quite a lot of pages from the comic book adaptation actually. Yeah, it also includes some sections of script and uh, all kinds of lovely pictures and whatnot. Very cool. Yeah, so this is, uh, being an obsessive fan with of the 1989 movie, this is something I will definitely be keeping. Um, yeah, and it's just fantastic. I actually used to have a t-shirt that had this logo on it. Sadly, I do not anymore. I think it was stolen. Anyway, um, yeah, so picked that up, and then, of course, picked up another addition to the DC Universe animated universe movies of the universe being animated. Uh, Superman Doomsday, which was actually, I think, the first one they did uh, that kind of kicked off the straight to video movies. This was kind of the big experiment. Um, what did I think of Superman Doomsday? Well, overall, actually, I enjoyed it. Um, of course, I am familiar with the original Death of Superman story. I did not have the infamous Superman number 75. I did have some of the lead-up issues, though. Like, I actually did have the first uh, full appearance of Doomsday and some of the issues leading up to it with the, the fist punching through the wall and stuff like that. And I had the first few issues of the uh, the reign of the Superman after they... Well, I had the first... Basically, I had the first first issues of all the um, reign of the Superman and the first appearances of all the Superman in that in... Uh, I think it was Action Comics number 600-something. Something like that. I don't even remember. It was so long ago. but uh, And I've long since sold them uh, anyway. Otherwise, I would show you. So, yeah... 
I knew we were in trouble when I saw that they had condensed the entire death and rebirth of Superman story down to 75 minutes. <laughs> Considering the full spectrum of that saga in graphic novel reprint form spans three volumes. You've basically got the death of Superman, which is his all-out battle with Doomsday and everything leading up to his death. Um, you've got World Without a Superman, which is basically everybody bawling their eyes out for... 300 pages, and then you've got Reign of the Supermen, which uh, basically has all these, you know, all the Superman imposters and whatnot, uh, and that, that whole storyline ultimately culminating in the return of Superman. It's one of the most controversial storylines in comic book history, and some people actually attribute it with ruining death in comics, because, <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I mean, it's to me... Comic books have always been that way, and uh, death has never been permanent in comics. I mean, come on, Marvel was doing that kind of thing as far back as the 60s. I mean, how many times has Charles Xavier died over the years, you know, in the X-Men? Uh, I mean, come on. So, yeah, so anyway, what did I think of the movie itself? Um, honestly, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Um, they, they basically... You know, the only part of it that really resembles the comics is sort of the first half, where it's his battle with Doomsday and everything. And after that, it kind of goes off on its own uh, storyline. I mean, there's just no way they could have condensed the, the actual graphic novel story down. Um, so it essentially does the same kind of thing, but uh, in a slightly different way. Rather than having several different Supermen going around and duking it out with each other and getting in each other's way and stuff... Uh, in this case, we have one. We have one sort of rogue Superman um, who, in a lot of ways, I think kind of embodies a lot of the core uh, character traits of the various Supermen that were in the Reign of the Superman story. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, as a condensed version of the story and sort of altered version of the story, I think it works perfectly fine. I mean, it hits all the right beats and it tells the story in nicely condensed form and it's and most importantly it's an entertaining film you know so i would definitely recommend it for superman fans and uh you know someone looking to add to their dc universe animated movie library um so taking a look at at what extras are on here we have quite a bit we've got all new featurettes when heroes die the making of superman doomsday and the clash of the juggernauts Requi Requiem and Rebirth, Superman Lives, comprehensive documentary about how the DC Comics team decided Superman's fate. That is really interesting, by the way. That That's basically the story of the, the making of the original comics, uh, The Death and Return of Superman. And that's really fascinating stuff. I was just completely enthralled with that whole documentary. Very cool. Uh, there's commentary by producer Bruce Tim, writer Dwayne Capizzi, uh, voice director Andrea Romano, and executive producer Gregory Novak. Uh, Justice League New Frontier teaser, Wonder Woman sneak peek, Behind the Voice featurette, Bruce Timm's top picks, four bonus episodes from Superman the Animated Series. you got Apocalypse Now, Parts 1 and 2, Brave New Metropolis, and Mixel Pixelated. <laughs> so, there you go. Not too bad. So, for a, a you know, premiere effort from the DC Universe animated movie team, um, it's it's not a bad movie, not not bad at all. Now I have heard rumors that they may revisit the death and rebirth storyline at some point and do uh, a more robust adaptation of it. Like, of course, we know that they're working on the Dark Knight Returns and doing that one as a two-parter. Um, the original thing, uh, the original story was basically four 64-page graphic novels. So adapting those into two, you know, say two-hour movies. That's that's perfectly feasible. Now, if they were going to redo this, I would think they would need to do it as a trilogy. Like, basically have one movie for each volume, each of the three sort of main story arcs. Um, that would be the ideal way to do it, I would think. So, taking a quick look at the packaging, we got this. This did originally come with a slipcover, sadly, uh, because I waited so long to get it. It does not have the slipcover, but oh well will live. <laughs> I heard some fans complain that they called it Doomsday, when Doomsday is barely even in it. I mean, he's in it essentially for the first third or so, where Superman, him and Superman are duking it out, and then that's it. But uh, that's 
that's the one. There you go. So I actually picked this up at uh, the lo one of the local pawn shops in Victoria. It was one of the one of the last things I got there before I moved. I guess it was maybe about a month before I moved. And uh, I think it was like 10 bucks or something. It wasn't that expensive. I looked for other animated movies, but this is the only one they had. For some reason, I guess it's one of the least popular ones, or they just have an abundance of them out there. And uh, there seemed to be a lot of them kicking around. So let's take a quick look at the Batman motion picture anthology collection. Uh, I was really happy to finally get this back in my collection. Uh, I do take some solace in knowing that the uh, individual who purchased the uh, my original set of this back in 2010 is someone, uh, well, you, you guys probably know him, a 1985 dude. Uh, a 1985 dude I know would provide a good home for this set. So let me just put the uh, disc down for a second. So basically this is, this is like, I used to have the VHS set of this and uh, it was exactly like this, or not the VHS set, the DVD set, what am I talking about? Uh, the DVD set was exactly like this, same packaging, everything, except it was in uh, full-size keep cases, like double disc keep cases. So that all goes down like that, sort of. Doesn't seem to be fitting properly now. It's crooked. Well, oh, I know why it's crooked. It's because it usually sits up a little bit on top of the cases. All right, so we'll just keep that there, looking all weird. So here we actually have slim cases, like that. And there we go, spread them out like cards. I actually kind of like how they did this, uh, did these covers with the uh, different movie versions of the Bat logo. So you got Batman Returns, they're all snowy. You got the uh, Batman Forever logo with the Riddler question mark. Very cool. And love or hate the movie, gotta admit the logo is kind of cool. The uh, Batman and Robin logo. I always thought that looked pretty snazzy actually. The one nice thing you can say about that movie. Um, in terms of content, everything that was on the old DVD edition is on this Blu-ray set. I'll quickly um, go over everything here. Uh, so Batman, we actually have like that. So you got Batman and the Joker on there. And in terms of extras on here, we have commentary by director Tim Burton on the set with Bob Kane. Legends of the Dark Knight, the history of Batman, the comic book saga as reinvented and reinterpreted over seven decades. Shadows of the Bat, the cinematic saga of the Dark Knight, parts one, two, and three, which uh, are entitled The Road to Gotham City, The Gathering Storm, and The Legend Reborn. Uh, so this is basically an ongoing documentary that goes across all four uh, movies uh, that basically gives you the, the, the most comprehensive behind the scenes story and very frank and honest I have to say as well I mean when we get to the third and fourth ones the, the producers and actors and everybody are very honest about the problems that the productions were having and how they weren't as good as the others as the first two uh, Beyond Batman documentary gallery visualizing Gotham the production design of Batman building the Batmobile those wonderful toys the props and gadgets of Batman designing the Batsuit from Jack to the Joker nocturnal overtures the music of Batman Three Prince music videos. You got Bat Dance, Party Man, and Scandalous, and that is all of them. I remember um, trying to tape all of those off of TV back in the day, and uh, I got all of them except for Scandalous. I didn't actually know that there was one for that until I got the DVD set of this before. Uh, the Heroes and the Villains profile galleries. Batman, the complete Robin storyboard sequence. Yeah, originally Robin was going to be in the first one, but uh, and they, they scripted it out and stuff, but they didn't uh, actually film that. And then, of course, the original theatrical trailer. Yeah, uh, interesting side note. The, um, <clears throat> what is it here? The um, novelization of the 1989 Batman movie. Yes, I was totally obsessed. I have the novelization, I have the comic book, I have the soundtrack, I have everything. Um, the novelization was actually written based on an earlier draft of the script. So one thing that's kind of cool is if you read the book, and you're familiar with the movie, you'll notice certain events play out differently. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like an alternate cut of the movie in that respect. Uh, the Batman Returns novel, not so much. It's uh, pretty much exactly as as it is on screen, as, as I recall. I don't know if I've actually read this one all the way through. I might have to do that. Might have to read both of them again. 
yeah. Anyway, uh, very cool stuff. So, where did I put all the discs? I just set them down somewhere. Oh, they're, they're over on the bookshelf. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, so. Of course, the the 1989 movie has the most extras because you know this was the big reinventing of Batman on the screen. I mean, prior to that, the only live action Batman we had was the six, 60s series. So this was a really big deal for Bat fans like myself to finally have the dark Batman brought to the big screen. So that was a big deal. And uh, some people didn't like that. Well, they can go to hell, because that's, that's the way Batman's supposed to be. Dark, 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 damn it. Alrighty, and then we have Batman Returns. Let's double check. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see the screen over here without my glasses. Uh, special features again. We have a commentary by director Tim Burton. The Bat, the Cat, and the Penguin making a featurette. Shadows of the Bat, the Cinematic Saga of the Dark Knight Part 4, Dark Side of the Night. Beyond Batman Documentary Gallery, we have Gotham City Revisited, the production design, design of Batman Returns, Sleek, Sexy, and Sinister, the costumes of Batman Returns, Making Up the Penguin, Assembling the Arctic Army, Bats, Mats, Mats, M-A-T-T-E-S, and Dark Knights, the visual effects of Batman, Inside the Elfman Studio, the music of Batman Returns. And then you got uh, the music video for Face to Face by Susie and the Banshees, and the Heroes and the Villains profile galleries, and the original theatrical trailer. So that is very cool indeed. And then if we look at uh, the disc art there, very nice. Got all three of the, the main characters there. Okay, then we have the sort of love it or hate it, Batman Forever. I actually liked Batman Forever. I thought it could have done without the Nicole Kidman love story, but uh, I really liked Jim Carrey as the Riddler, and I thought uh, I thought Val Kilmer was okay. He was a little bit stiff, but, uh, you know, he, he was competent. Um, like, I don't, I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as Batman and Robin. I'll put it that way. Batman and Robin is just a frickin' mess. But Batman Forever actually has enough good in it that, you know, I think it's good. And I really liked Chris O'Donnell as Robin, actually. I thought he was, you know, a tough, you know, tough kind of take-no-crap kind of Robin, and I liked that. Uh, commentary, uh, special features, commentary by director Joel Schumacher. Additional scenes, riddle me this. What? Why is Batman Forever? How a new director and cast created a new vision of Gotham's classic good and bad guys. Shadows of the Bat, the Cinematic Saga of the Dark Knight, Part 5, Reinventing a Hero. Beyond Batman, Documentary Gallery, Out of the Shadows, the production design of Batman Forever, The Many Faces of Gotham City, Night Moves, the stunts of Batman Forever, Imaging Forever, the visual effects of Batman Forever, Scoring Forever, the music of Batman Forever. Yeah, this one did not have music by um, Danny Elfman, I don't believe. Yeah, no, it was Elliot Goldenthal. Elliot Goldenthal, I believe, did one of the Star Trek... Uh, movies so yeah anyway uh seal kiss from a rose music video so i really like the fact that they included the music videos in this because the you know the sort of key songs in it played a big part in all these movies like the first one obviously was all the prince songs second one was uh just that beautiful susie and the banshees song which which i've, I've always been a big fan of susie and the banshees so i love that song um i think it's just beautiful uh, so it's great to have the, the music videos included as bonuses. Uh, finally, you got the Heroes and the Villains profile galleries and theatrical trailer. And we're running really long, so let's wrap this up quick. And finally, we have Batman and Robin. And there you go. Stay frosty. Got Mr. Freeze there. Okay. And here we have commentary by director Joel Schumacher, Shadows of the Bat, The Cinematic Saga of the Dark Knight Part 6, Batman Unbound. The cast and crew just trashed this movie in the documentaries. <laughs> and even Joel Schumacher at one point in the documentary apologizes to fans for fucking up Batman. Um, additional scene, Alfred's Lost Love. Uh, Beyond Batman... Documentary Gallery, uh, Bigger, Bolder, Brighter, the production design of Batman and Robin, Maximum Overdrive, the vehicles of Batman and Robin, Dressed to Thrill, the costumes of Batman and Robin, Frozen Freaks and Femme Fatales, the makeup of Batman and Robin, Freeze Frame, the visual effects of Batman and Robin. 
And then we've actually got four music videos. You have The End is the Beginning is the End by The Smashing Pumpkins, Foolish Games by Jewel, Gotham City by R. Kelly, and Look Into My Eyes by Bone Thugs and Harmony. And finally, the last Heroes and the Villains profile galleries and the theatrical trailer. So there you go, the complete 1989 to 97 Batman cinematic saga. How am I going to arrange these here? There we go. Okay. Top to bottom. So put those back in the box. I almost said bat in the box. Wouldn't have that just been hilarious? Yes. Well, I didn't say that. So, and then we'll, uh, we'll just put the two books up there too. All right. Good. That's a lot of Batman stuff. Yeah, overall, you know, I enjoyed the 89 to 97 saga, um, really just minus the last one, you know. And even the last one has few things that are okay. It has the Batman logo on the poster, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway... That is it for me to you for now. Very happy to have this back in the collection. Hopefully it will stay there this time. Uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. If not, well, it's not like it's hard to get. I like the fact that Warner is keeping these in print, at least for the time being. Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara. Yeah, fuck.